then you may well have the program uh, with you. If you haven't, this is the format of the day. This is how it's going to run. Sometimes, you know, we outline, we put timings down, and we maybe run over a little, a, a little bit, or we might be finished a little bit shorter, you know, but we see how it goes. But this is the outline. So um, I'm going to talk about foot balance first, okay? Foot balance, really important. It's probably the most important thing that we do to the horse, okay? Foot balance. So it's important, you know, it's a, it's a big subject. It's very what we would call subjective, you know? One person's opinion of foot balance might be different from another one, from another one, from another one, okay? But there are certain guidelines that we can use to hopefully make sure that we're trimming feet the right way for the horse, okay? So we're gonna cover all of that in the foot balance lecture. Um, next up, it will be Mark, and he's going to do confirmation, looking at horses, okay? The way that we're looking at horses before we shoe them. And again, to make sure that we're shoeing the horse in the best way possible for the horse, depending and according to its confirmation. After that, we get to eat something, and then straight after that, around about one o'clock, I think you have a talk about the school and the future of the school, and I think that Avi will, will be leading that. Um, at two o'clock, I'm gonna tell you uh, about the UK exam system. You know, the UK apprenticeship, and I think uh, at the moment in Sweden, it's a great thing that you've got going. You know, from somebody in the UK looking at, at the Swedish um, system and the school, it's a great thing. It really is, you know. Um, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about the UK system and how we do things. You know, it might not be the right way. It might not be better, you know, or worse than anybody else's. But it's for information and it, there's a lot in there about apprentices and apprenticeships, how much they get paid, how long they, what they have to do on the exam, and things like that. So you can relate it maybe to your system here. Um, and then after that, we get a demonstration. We get a real life demonstration, um, hopefully using all of the things that we spoke about earlier in the day, foot balance and confirmation and assessment. Okay, and Mark's gonna do that and I'll be, I'll be with him. And it's an open, oh, the whole day, the whole day, is, is open to questions, yeah? Absolutely open. If you have a question, let me know straight away or let us know and we can talk about it, you know? The whole purpose of the day is education, you know? And it's a two-way thing. I've learned something already today, okay? So it, the, it's a two-way thing though, you know? If anyone has any questions, not sure about something, something isn't clear that I've said, just let me know. It's great. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try and answer the questions. After that, we have what I've just called like an open forum. So anybody wants to talk about something, a particular subject, having problems with something, don't understand something, that's the time. That's the time to, to, uh, to ask us and we can sort that out. I'm sure between the two of us or even people in the room, you know, we have a massive, massive range of knowledge we know lots of things, you know, between the people in the room. And if we can't answer, then maybe somebody, in the, somebody else in the audience can. Okay, so just a tiny, tiny little bit about me. So I was a, I've been a farrier for 27 years. Okay, I, uh, I started in 1991. And I took my first examination, my first exam um, in 1994. And that's what we call the diploma. Okay, so the first examination in the UK is you hand make, you make two shoes and put them on two feet of a horse in two hours. That's, that's our examination. But that's after a four year apprenticeship. Okay, but I did mine after three years because I did it in the, uh, in the British Army. Okay, so the army system is a little bit quicker and it's a little bit more intense than the civilian apprenticeship, okay? Um, in 1998, most of you wouldn't, probably aren't, weren't born then, but in 1998, I did my next, next exam up, which we call the associate, which is a higher level. It's a higher level examination, and the requirements 
are far greater. You know, the knowledge required to pass the associate level is far greater than required for the diploma, you know. Um, and I failed it. I failed my associate examination at the first attempt. And I failed it on the knowledge, the theory side. Didn't, didn't know enough for the examination. Wasn't really prepared for it, okay. But I passed it at the second attempt. And then recently, I passed my fellowship, was the highest exam in the UK that you can possibly take, okay. I'm also a uh, Worshipful Company of Farriers examiner. So I'm an examiner in England and I examine regularly, as does Mark, we're both examiners, and I examine regularly on the diploma examinations and the associate examinations and the fellowship examinations as well. Okay. Um, I'm a member of the, the EEG, which is the exams ex executive group. And what we do, it consists of, um, I think, three vets and four farriers, and we decide the level, the level of the questions for the examinations, we decide whether the tasks that we're giving the students in the examinations are appropriate, whether they're too difficult or whether they're too easy. You know, the level is decided by the EEG. Okay. I'm also a judge, so sometimes I judge competitions. Um, I compete as well. You know, I, I, I do lots of competitions or try and do as many competitions as work will allow, but you know, every day, that's what I'm doing. I'm a full-time farrier. I'm shoeing horses, you know, every single day. So, that's a little bit about me. Um, the type of horses that I shoe are mainly um, sort of higher level, higher level show jumpers and eventers and dressage horses. Uh, this is the horse that I shoe, and he's just jumped there at uh, Olympia. This was at Olympia um, at Christmas time, and that's great. I love it because I don't think we get to see our horses that often, you know, doing what they're employed to do, you know, doing what they do best, you know. Um, this horse, terrible feet, really poor quality feet, difficult. He's difficult to shoe. He has natural imbalances. He has weak feet. They're hard. They're hard to try and keep looking good and looking strong. You know, and it's hard to keep, him, to keep him sound and jumping at the level that he jumps at, you know. He's a five-star horse, a five-star show jumper. And it's hard, you know, to keep some of these horses doing what they should be doing on a daily basis, you know. Um, so, foot balance, okay, foot balance. As I mentioned earlier, it's very important. The foot is on the bottom of the limb. You know, it's right at the bottom. So it's really important, you know, that we trim in accordance with the forces that the hoof capsule experiences. You know, the hoof, if it's not balanced, it will change shape. It will distort, you know, under compression and pressure and weight, you know. So it's really important. Again, foot balance, very subjective. We could line five farriers up against the wall and we could come up with five different opinions on foot balance, you know. So again, it is subjective. And vets, vets have an opinion on foot balance, you know. Owners have an opinion on foot balance. And farriers, of course, have an opinion on foot. In fact, anybody, anybody sometimes has an opinion on foot balance and whether the foot is balanced or whether it's out of balance or whatever. Okay, so we need to make sure, as the professionals, the farriers, yeah, we need to make sure that we're getting it right. Okay. So, what is this thing called balance? Okay, we know certain things. Okay, we know certain things. Uh, we know that the centre of gravity is approximately around this area here, you know, um, of the horse. Okay, we know that. Okay, and then viewed from the front, we know the centre of gravity should be where the sternum is running down the centre, okay? So most of the weight is borne down the inside of the limbs. The danger, the danger of giving a, a foot balance lecture, yeah, or talk, is that I show you pictures of perfectly conformed horses. But that's not, it's not, that's not the reality. It's not like that, you know? In the real world, 
we're dealing with horses with poor conformations, you know, white, base wide stance. We're dealing with all sorts of problems on a daily basis, yeah. There aren't that many horses with straight limbs, yeah. There aren't that many horses with straight limbs, okay. But what we must do is look at the, tr try and look at the whole horse, okay, when we're assessing for foot balance, okay. So, balance means equality, okay? It means equality, and we're looking at proportions as well, okay? So, is the horse in balance with itself? Has it got a really long back? Is its neck really long? Is its head really heavy? That would change the center of gravity or the center of balance further forward, you know? Has it, are its limbs long? Are its limbs short? All these sorts of things we should be taking into consideration when we're looking at foot balance, okay? So, right back to the beginning, right back to the beginning, the horse normally would run in a her herd, okay? In the wild, it's a herd animal, you know? It's a prey animal, and it's evolved over 60 million years, okay? It's a successful species, okay? Normal activities of the horse are just walking around, yeah? Walking around, trotting, maybe the odd gallop here or there. They walk around about anything from 15 to 25 kilometers a day. Yeah, that's the normal activities of the horse, okay? But we, we make them do things, you know? We make them do things um, which they're not designed to do, okay? So we make them carry weight, okay? We put a rider on the horse and we make them carry weight. They're not designed to do that. Okay. We make them pull things. We make them jump huge fences with a rider on top as well. You know? They're not naturally designed to do that. Okay? So we are the problem because we make them do things that they're not designed to do. We make them run yeah, around a big track. We make them trot. Last night we were driving home back to the hotel from here and we drove by a track and there were some trotting horses trotting around. You know. They're not naturally designed to do that, okay? They're not designed to do that either, you know? So we are the problem. We cause the problem, and then we try and fix the problem as well. So foot balance, which is what we're talking about. Foot balance, okay? What is it? What does it mean? This is my definition, so I'll read that out. Foot balance is a term, okay? It's a term used to describe the relationship, okay, between the horse's limb, yep, that's the whole limb, the foot, and the horseshoe, okay? That is a definition, that's my definition, okay? Might not be the best definition, but that's a definition. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about foot balance, okay? And we need to get away, when I did my diploma, my three years studying for the diploma exam, the first exam, I was taught how to shoe a foot, yep, but not taught how to shoe the horse or the limb, okay? Just taught how to shoe a foot. In competitions, and this is the difference now between competitions and examinations, yeah, or everyday shoeing, competitions, quite often, you're, you're shoeing a foot, that's it. Doesn't really matter what is above the foot or the, or the fetlock or the knee, yeah? But in everyday shoeing, which is what today we're going to be talking about, we should be shoeing the horse's limb, the whole lot, you know? We should be shoeing, placing the shoe, you know, where it should be in accordance with what's above it, okay? So we're just trying to open everything up, and it's the same in the UK. We're trying to open everything up to, to, to shoe the horse and shoe the limb, not just the foot, like you would in a contest or a competition, okay? Um, barriers aren't normally guilty of causing imbalances in horses' feet, okay? Farriers aren't normally guilty of causing imbalances, I don't think, okay? Some might, but in general, we're not guilty of that, okay? What we are guilty of sometimes is not recognising an imbalance and then doing something about it, okay? That's really important. Okay, identifying, recognizing that there's an imbalance in a horse 
and then doing something about it, you know? That's, that's really where we, uh, where we ought, what we ought to be doing, okay? So, foot balance is not about straightening um, and correcting limbs. Quite often, in, in the UK, certainly, um, farriers are expected or asked to correct an imbalance, yep, or a rotation, yeah? Showing people that use horses for showing, yep. So it's all judged on appearance and the way that the horse moves. Quite often they, they trot in a straight line like that. Quite often farriers, certainly in the UK, and I'm sure it's the same here, we're asked to correct that, yeah? The horse is turning out, make it straight, yeah? Or the horse is turning in, yeah? We can't do that, yeah? We can't make a horse, we can't derotate a pair of limbs. It's just not possible. It's not possible, you know, okay? But what we can do sometimes is make them look a little better. But it's not about uh, correcting and straightening limbs. It's about recognizing faults and conformational negatives, you know? Poor, poor elements of the horse's conformation um, and not allowing them to reduce the ability of the horse. This horse here, you can clearly see, you know, you can clearly see it has an imbalance. It has a, a conformational abnormality, you know. A lot of horses are naturally turned out like that, certainly in the hind limbs, you know, but it has a conformational abnormality. So, if you can identify the negatives, then you can support those negatives either through trimming or shoeing. Uh, I hope you can see this. I hope you can see it clearly enough. But this horse here has, a, has an abnormality and it's highlighted with the yellow line there. Hopefully you can see that. It's broken. The line is broken at the coronary band here, you know, and it's all sort of shooting towards the inside, okay? The horse will always, the, pe the feet will always point to the longest part of the foot. So this horse, the longest part of that foot is here. So the feet are pointing here, okay? But with a simple bit of trimming, and this was in uh, South Africa, this was in South Africa, and you know, with a simple bit of trimming, just dress that flare off, then you can correct that, yeah. Or at least make it look a lot better, you know. Um, but that's what it's about. It's about recognizing and then knowing what to do about it. So, the foot is at the ground extremity. It's at the bottom of the limb. And for that reason, all weight must pass through it, okay? It is of vital importance that the foot is correctly balanced, okay? Is that true? Is it true that it's of vital importance to the horse? It's desirable, yeah, but horses go around with imbalances, don't they? Lots of horses go around and they never say anything. They just carry on and they go around with these imbalances, you know, until something happens. You know, some horses have weak feet, like the show jumping horse. Some horses have weak feet. Now, some horses with good, strong feet with an imbalance, yeah, they just, they just keep going because that's what horses do, you know. And there are some horses with, um, with no imbalance, with weak feet. Yeah, we can, we can manage with that. But horses with an imbalance and weak feet together quite often are difficult. They're difficult to, for the feet to stay together and it's difficult to make them look good, okay? So, that's just demonstrating that weight comes down the limb, and if the hoof or the, the foot is correctly balanced, then the structures that are designed to take weight, take weight equally, and that's how the foot's designed, you know? So the weight-bearing structures then, from the bottom of the foot on the sole, okay, from the solar view, is the frog, yep. Yeah. The hoof wall, which goes all the way around the perimeter of the foot, yep, and the bars there, yep. And the junction, the white line, is just on the inside of the hoof wall, yep. And again, that's designed to take a little bit of weight as well, okay. So the, a cross section of the foot, and again, I hope, you can, I hope this is clear enough. Um, the hoof wall, the outer part, grows from here. The middle part is this bit here. And then obviously the inner part is the white line there, that bright white uh, strip of hoof wall. And that connects to the, uh, the uh, sensitive part of the foot, okay, which is what we call the lamina. But it's basically um, the, the leaves which come out from the P3 
and the insensitive part interlocks. It's not like that, is it? It's not like that. No, it's like that. It interlocks the, the horny, the hard part, interlocks with the sensitive part, and that's how, and it all grows down like that, okay? And then other weight-bearing structures, obviously the, uh, the, the, the sole and, the, and the, uh, the hoof wall at the bottom, then obviously the frog and the heel area here, you know. But in between the joints, you've got cartilage, which acts as a shock absorber, and it provides a smooth gliding lotion, uh, motion between the, uh, between the bones. And again, it's not, it's not that clear because the, the screen isn't that bright, but this is how it looks when it's all stripped away. So there's the hoof wall overlying the sensitive lamina, which overlies the, uh, the P3, the bone, the coffin bone, inside of, inside of the hoof wall. Okay. Now, not sure if this will work properly. Hopefully it will. But this is just a... Um, no, it didn't. This is just, hopefully, you can see uh, the mechanics of how it all works, you know. And this is like a cross-section with a forced with a force plate on top and it just pushes everything down. You can see how it all interacts, you know? So if you've got imbalances going on in there, then obviously that's gonna affect, you know, the way that that moves. And same again on here, you know, this is just demonstrating the amount that the foot expands and contracts upon weight bearing, okay? So, so as the force comes down, you can see the little, hopefully you can see the line there you can see that expansion, how much it expands at the heel area. Now the heel area isn't attached to the bone, it's open. Okay? That's why we get this amount of expansion and contraction in the heel area. And that's the radiographical view, okay, all the way down. It's amazing, it's amazing how strong it is, you know, and how much it um, holds together. <clears throat> Again, you, you can't see that because it's, um, because it's too bright. So sometimes when you take off a shoe, you take off a shoe and you turn it over, yeah, you can see this, this bit here is normally all clean and shiny, you know? And again, that just further demonstrates uh, the amount of expansion that we get in the heel area. So it's important, it's really important that we allow uh, the foot to expand and act as naturally as possible, even though it's got a shoe on it. You know, there's no doubt that the foot functions better without shoes on, you know, no doubt. But shoeing, putting a shoe on to a horse is a necessary evil sometimes, yeah? It's a necessary evil. It's necessary to apply a shoe either for protection uh, or grip, you know, or sometimes surgical reasons, you know? If a horse has an operation, sometimes it's necessary to apply a shoe for that reason, to allow it to, to, whatever structure has been operated on, to allow it to recover and to recuperate. So, there are three aspects of balance, three different uh, ways in which we view foot balance, okay, or hoof balance, all right? And they are um, medial lateral, which is inside and outside. You know, the view that when we look down a front limb, for example, we hold it like that and we look down it, you know, and we sight it and we're looking at the medial lateral, the inside outside balance. Okay. The other view, the other aspect is anterior posterior or front to back. We call it hoof pastern axis because it's the line between the hoof and the pastern, you know, the side view. Okay. And the final view is the foot shape uh, or the solar view. So we're looking at the foot, the shape of the foot. You know, we're looking for symmetry, okay, and we're looking for proportions as well. All right. So, medial lateral then, this is the view that I'm talk we're, we're talking about medial lateral, is inside to outside balance. Anyone use one of these? T-square? Anyone ever used one? Yep, Max, yep, okay. Nobody else? Nope, okay, yep, Peter, okay. Yeah, I mean the T-square, people have different views on the T-square, you know? Whether it's a, a good idea or not, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Um, and uh, I know that uh, Mark, I think, agrees, you know. It's a good tool. It's a good tool. Sometimes, after 27 years, after 27 years of shoeing horses, I still get my T-square out for some feet. And I just drop the T-square on, 
just to look because sometimes I think your eyes, you know, they get, um, they get um, drawn by other things and if the horse has, horse has uh, abnormalities, you know, or shunting happens in the heel area, then I think uh, sometimes the T-square just gets you back to what is actually there. So you see what is actually there, you know, with no sort of distractions, you know, or illusions, you know. So yeah, I personally think the T-square is a good thing. I have one in my car, in my truck, you know, and I use it quite regularly. I don't dress everything with the T-square, but most horses I will have, I will drop the T-square down and have a look, you know. Um, so this is how, again, it's, it's, it's not that clear because of the light, but this is how I look down a, a front foot, okay? So I, I've got my hands very loosely, very loosely held on this bone here, you know, and I l allow the foot to hang n as naturally as possible, yep? So I'm not pulling it out one way and I'm not, you know, pushing it in that way. I'm trying to allow the horse to his, his limb to, to hang as naturally as possible, yeah? Because then I get a, a natural view, a view of what is actually there, yeah? So head and eyes, eyes directly above the foot, and I'm looking directly down, okay? So I'm getting, hopefully, I'm getting a true reflection on, on the, the hoof balance or the balance of the foot, hopefully, you know? So what I also do, what I also do with feet is I will look at the foot and I'll probably take three seconds just to look at it. Yeah, any more than that. And I think I'm probably getting a, a different view of what is actually there. Okay, so when you, when you pick the foot up, you, you look down the foot and within sort of, within I think about three seconds, you know, you've got a true view of what's there. Okay, then you're trimming down. Okay, have another look, a couple of seconds, three seconds and then you're trimming like that, okay? Um, so, you know, I think any more than three seconds and I start to see things that, that probably aren't there, you know? If I'm trimming a foot and I can't get it right, if I can't get it, I'll leave that foot, I go to another foot, do the same, do the trim, look down that, and then I'll go back to that foot, pick it up, and again, within that first three seconds, I think you get a, a true reflection, a true view <laughs> Of, um, of, of the balance of the hoof wall and the limb. Okay. So, um, this is, this is uh, interesting. I think, I think in Sweden, personally, I think you're lucky because when you shoe horses, you're inside. You're in a barn normally, I think, you know? Uh, in the UK, two weeks ago, we had, um, for us, we had a lot of snow, yeah? The whole world stopped, you know? Me and Max, we got stuck in a, in a snowdrift. Yeah, it was difficult. But we were outside shoeing horses, outside, in the cold, in the snow. We don't always, I mean, some of my better places like this one, yeah, great, we're inside, you know. But, uh, but normally, we're outside in the, in the cold, sometimes in the wet as well, you know. I don't shoe horses in rain, but if it's just a little bit raining, then yeah, I'll just do it, you know. But I think, I think in, in Sweden, generally, you're inside in a barn, which is just great. You need to be, of course, because you have a lot more snow and cold than, than we do in, in the UK, you know. But that's great. Uh, when you're inside, you know, quite often um, you maybe have cross ties, what we call cross ties, where the, horses, where the horse's head should be in line with its body, like that there, you know. Um, but lots of times, most times in England, we're shoeing horses that are tied with one rein to a wall, you know, so that the head is sometimes, you know, is, is bent or the head and neck may be bent, you know. So again, that's a consideration when you're looking at, when you're viewing foot balance, yeah, it's a consideration. Need to make sure that everything is, is in alignment, you know, is straight, as straight as possible. Because that might influence, you know, the way that the hoof or the way that the foot, the limb is hanging. Um, rubber mats, yeah, these mats, yeah, sometimes in England they have these mats, the better places have the mats, and they're sort of useful because if the mat is soft, yeah, then when you look at the horse, yeah, you can see where the weight is coming down, and obviously in the front limbs there, you know, quite often the, the, the hoof or the foot 
will be lower down. It will stand like that. Because where the most weight comes down, yep, that's where the mat sort of compresses and it looks like, in, and you get a true view then of where the weight is coming down on that limb, you know. Um, so, medial lateral, this is the view. That's the long, what we call the long axis. That's the line down the center of all the bones, yep. And on the end of that line, yep, that's what we should be, or what we're looking to achieve, what we're dressing to, you know. And then ultimately, the red line there, hopefully you can see that, yep. Uh, whatever's between this line and that line, okay, hopefully is equal, yep. And that's the idea, yep. But you know all this anyway. You know all this. You've been taught this, I'm sure. So, this is the foot, okay, same principle down there, and you can see, you can see, according to the, uh, to the T square, you can see how out of balance that foot is, you know, you can see that, all right. So, this is a horse that I was shoeing for a little while, it's not alive anymore, but it wasn't my fault, okay, this is a horse that I was shoeing, and I, tri I shod this horse five weeks previous to this photograph, okay? So you might look down this, okay? You might look down that and go, well, you know, what are you doing? You know, that's way out. That's way out of balance, you know? And I shod this the time before, okay? So that's, um, we need to remember that when we're looking at other people's work, sometimes um, what you're seeing isn't, isn't how it was on the day that it was shod, yeah? This horse had a, a big imbalance, a conformational imbalance, which caused which caused the outside, the outside of the foot to grow a lot more than the inside. Yeah, a lot more. You can see that. It's amazing, you know. It's an extreme example, but it's amazing, you know. If the, the hoof wall will always grow, yeah, where it isn't under so much weight, okay. So I can, I can tell, and you, we'll see a picture of this from the front in a minute, and it, and it will all sort of, hopefully, it will all come into place, yeah. It'll all make sense, yeah. So the, the inside was, was heavily loaded with weight, lots of weight on the inside and not a lot of weight on the outside, you know, which meant that the inside didn't grow, but the outside kept growing, you know, at the normal rate, okay. So this is the limb from the front, from the front view, okay, there he is, okay, you can see that, you can see how long this is, you know, from here, here to here is the longest part of that foot. You know, and if you stick a line down it, yep, the foot is broken. The, the, the axis, the line, that line there is broken. Yeah, if it was, if it continued straight, it would end up here, but it's not, it's broken, you know. So, what do I need to do about that? Firstly, I've identified it. I've realized there's a problem. Yeah, there's an imbalance. And I didn't, I don't think that I caused that imbalance, okay, but it's a confirmational imbalance. The horse has an imbalance, okay? So I've identified it. The second thing is, I'm going to do something about it. I know what to do about it. And that is based on looking at the different, at different views of that limb. So I look down the medial lateral and I know that it's, it's, it's higher, much higher on the lateral or the outside. And I'm looking from the front and that just confirms everything. Yeah, it just confirms to me what the, what the, what the other view um, told me. So, I know what I'm going to do. This is the foot. Yeah, I've just taken the shoe off. This is the foot. You can see how much growth there is here. Yeah, look how much growth there is there. Look at this. It's all gone. Yeah, it's all gone. Because the hoof wall, the hoof wall is under so much compression and abnormal weight bearing. Yeah, it just can't take it. It can't take that amount of unequal loading and imbalance. When this horse walks, when the horse walks, yep, it lands here. It lands here first, yep, and it all rocks back. The weight comes down on the inside, inside heel, yep. That is a problem, okay? That needs, something needs to be done about that. But the only reason I know that is because I walked the horse away and I walked the horse back, and then I did it again walk the horse away and I walk the back horse back and I can see that it lands like that duh, duh. it's got a two-phase landing yep outside that part first that part first and then all the weight yep rocks back onto the inside heel 
And these feet are a problem. These feet are a problem because time, time is the enemy. Yep. The day is trimmed, is just about balanced. Yeah. But from that day on, he grows out. He grows out, he grows out, he grows out. And then five weeks later, five weeks later, guess what? You know, we're, we're back to where we were on the, uh, on the initial picture. We're back to that, you know. So time is the enemy. So, personally, I shoe this horse or shod the horse a little bit less time. So if it would normally go six weeks, that's far too long for a horse like this. So I would bring it down to maybe four weeks, you know, so it doesn't grow so far out of balance. Okay, so... This, this is the effects, you know, this is the inside of the hoof wall. See that crack? Yeah, see the, hopefully you can see the, the distortion, you know. These lines here where they're parallel here, they're straight round to here, then all of a sudden they go up like that. They go up like that, you know, because the foot can't take it. We call that shunting, you know, where the, the hoof wall gets pushed in an upwards direction, you know. But that's a problem, that is a problem, because it makes all this hoof wall on the inside weak. It's very weak, you know, and then it becomes difficult to, to nail a shoe onto the foot and keep it there. And because it's on the inside, because it's on the inside, you've got the other foot there and sometimes they will, they will tread them off, you know, they will, they will lose the shoe. They will take it off, you know, which is, is even a, is an even bigger problem, okay. So that's the foot after it's been trimmed. Take this down, you know, I can't really take a lot of this down. I can clean it up, you know, I can clean that up but there's not a lot there, you know. Um, and then when I look down after the foot's been trimmed, back down to that view, <laughs> back down to that view, hopefully it looks a lot better, yeah, which I think you'll agree does, but I still can't get that, you know. The problem with, with trying to achieve balance, and this is where we need to be careful, we need to be careful, because the problem with trying to achieve balance is that all the time you're taking foot off and the foot is there for protection you're taking foot off you know so in in england you know 99 percent of people hot shoe okay we we get the shoe hot we shape it to the foot we take it to the foot and we you know burn it on yeah with heat if you're taking the protection away from the foot trying to balance the foot, oh, it's still high, it's still high, you, you, you keep sort of rasping and rasping and trimming off, obviously, you know, you're weakening the foot, but also you're taking it nearer and nearer to the sensitive part. So we need to, you know, it, it's almost, a, it's almost a, a decision between achieving the hoof balance or, or keeping the horse sound and, and free of pain. You know, so again, it's, uh, you've just got to be a little bit careful if you're chasing balance all the time. So, <clears throat> there's the foot at the top, that's the original foot, and then that's after it's been dressed. See, the coronary band now is higher up on the inside, yeah? But that settles down. In, in the next slide, you'll see, it's amazing. It's amazing, you've just, got to, you've just got to see it and notice it, you know, and remember, okay? So the coronary band now, that is, is on, a, uh, on a sort of bit of a slant. It's higher up on the inside, yeah. But when I've got the shoe on, then, all right, it's a little bit higher up, but it looks a lot straighter, you know, and a lot better. It certainly looks a lot better than it did um, in the first slide that I showed you, you know, from the front, okay. And hopefully, hopefully, you know, it's, um, he's going to be a bit better on that for the next few weeks. The other thing I can do, which is a like, it's a sort of higher level technique, is I can, uh, I can make the shoe, I can make the shoe thinner on the outside here. So again, that sort of further, you know, takes off outside and stands him up straighter, you know. So I'm trying, I'm trying to achieve um, a straight line down there. I'm trying to achieve that, you know, and get the foot underneath the limb where it should be, rather than sort of out there. Okay, that's my aim. Hopefully, hopefully I've achieved that. Okay, so the problem with that though is you just gotta watch that you don't over, over lower outsides. Um, and the reason that that pony there, you can't, you can't see its feet, but 
The reason that pony is in this slide is because I got caught out. I got caught out. Um, I overlowered outsides in an, in, in an effort to try and achieve medio lateral balance. And the effect was what I did to the horse was the outsides of its feet here, they all broke, broke away. Okay, so that's that word balance, isn't it? You know, it's getting it right. It's somewhere between too high on the outside or too high on the inside, you know, and that's what balance is all about, is getting it right. And the only way you know that you've got it right is if the foot is, is, um, is strong, yep. If the foot is strong and the horse is working well, yep, and you look, you're seeing him walk away and walk back and everything is landing as flat as possible, then you know you know you're in the right area, you know? But if the feet are breaking away, something's wrong, and the owner will know, the owner will know that something's wrong or something's not right, you know? But you're the person, I'm the person that needs to solve the problem. Otherwise, they get somebody else. Somebody else will come and look at it and say, oh yeah, well, what he was doing is this, and I think we should be doing that. And then all of a sudden, the owner thinks that you're, a, you know, you're, you're, you're no good, and the new farrier's the best thing ever. Yeah, so, you know, it's important that we get it right. So the hind limbs then, okay, look a quick look at the hind limbs, really important. Hind limbs get forgotten about quite often, yeah. We don't often think as much about the hind limbs as we do with the front limbs. Yeah, front limbs get all the, in the books, the textbooks, you read lots and lots on front limb foot balance. Yeah, you can read... You know, page, you can read every night about front limb foot balance, but hind limb foot balance quite often, I think, get a little bit forgotten about. But that's so important. It's so important to set the horse up behind correctly because it's all related. Hind limbs and front limbs, everything. It's the whole horse, remember. We're shoeing the horse, not just a foot or a limb or a pair of fronts or a pair of hinds, you know. We're shoeing everything. It's all related. You know, the forelimbs take most of the weight. Yep, 60, 65% of the weight is on the forelimbs. Yeah, and they sort of, you know, they, they keep the front end in the air as it's going forwards. Racehorses, sometimes it's said that they pull the horse along the ground because they're after so much speed that they pull, you know, they, they use their toes to pull as well as the hind limbs, they push, you know, the hind limbs push the horse along the ground, you know. Um, so. I think the hind limbs are quite often overlooked, but there are three, three major functions of the hind limbs. Propulsion, that is pushing the horse along the ground. You know, pivoting, so dressage for example. I shoe some good dressage horses, and the things that they have to do, the, the moves that they have to um, complete in the higher level tests, really hard, really hard on the hop joints. You know, these joints at the back, yeah? You know, and a lot of dressage horses, have hock problems. The hock is a, it's a complex joint. You know, there are seven, sometimes eight, bones in that joint. You know, there are lots of joints. You know, lots of bones. It's a complex um, anatomical, you know, structure. Okay, so again, the hock, really, really important. Okay, so let's have, look at this here where the horse is jumping. You know, how much strain, um, pressure, are the hocks under massive amount? You know that's important. That's why it's so important that we that we shoe the the hind limbs correctly in accordance with this confirmation. Okay, let's have a quick look at a horse um, jumping. So this is the horse taking off. Okay, slow mo footage, and this was uh, done in accordance with a British team um, uh, training day. They got a, a, but look at that. Look at that. So the hocks there under their maximum strain. Okay, they've got to get the weight of the rider. They've got the weight of the horse. Everything is on the hock joints, fetlocks, and down to the feet. You know that horse. That horse needs a good, solid, strong platform. Yep, yeah, or base to push off from. You know, it really does. My show jumpers, I give them as much. You know, length of the heel. Of the heel, I give them as much out of the back of the, of the hinds as much as I can, yeah? Because that horse needs as big a platform, as big a platform as I can possibly give it, because it's pushing away. It makes sense, 
you know it makes sense for it to push um, and get the weight of the horse and the rider over the fence and there it goes and the hocks extend everything extends and then they all they all recoil back again see the hocks recoil back and so do the fetlocks and there he is he's away over the fence now important to see that the, when he lands as well yeah and now you hopefully you can get an appreciation of the amount of um, strain that the tendons are under here he comes down he always lands with the leading leg there you go and the fetlock will stop it just about there that is its maximum again you can't hope it's not as clear as it as it could be but that fetlock there it just looks wrong you know the foot is in the ground and the fetlock is parallel parallel to the ground it's amazing things that we make them do you know they're not they're not built for this and we 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 put riders on top and we make them do things sometimes until they break or they become lame or they damage a ligament or a, or a tendon or cartilage or something goes wrong you know and then we've got to fix it okay but they, they really are really are amazing amazing animals okay so hind limb balance can't we can't view hind limb balance like we do uh, front limb balance okay so t-square you know anyone use the t-square for the hind limbs no oh, somebody gonna put their hands up then no no you can't I don't think you can use the t-square in the same way in the hind limbs that you do in the front limbs it's just not possible you know there's too many there's too many um, variables you know it just it just it's not accurate it's not accurate you know um, so you can look like you can look at the hind limbs like that where you rest the hind limb on your on your your knee or your thigh on your on your chaps and look down it like that or you can look down it like that where the the hind limb hopefully is vertical you know yep again or this is the way I do it okay this is the way that I do it I'm looking at it on the ground loaded yep that's the way that I try and view hind limb balance okay on the ground weight bearing so it's standing on it you know um, I will look down it like that as well to make sure the foot is flat yep so I use the two views but mostly I'm looking at this view here and I'm looking at this view when I'm trimming the front feet yep so when I'm trimming a front I also look at the hind limb while it's on the ground loaded you know to make sure that so so I know how I'm going to trim trim that hind limb right so this is the anterior posterior view okay so this is the front to back view this is the view from the side like that okay so hopefully hopefully we're trimming for a straight line there hopefully that's the plan okay like that there so the front to back view yeah must be viewed from two angles not only from the side okay but also from the front as well okay the limb should also be viewed from the front okay sometimes in in certainly in england we forget about that bit we forget about looking at the horse from the front as well as from the side okay but it's important it's important certainly for the medial lateral view you know so we look at some um, hoof past an axis quickly okay again this depends on the breed really yeah but this is out of an old english book yeah and this was you know in the days when we didn't have european horses in england yeah this is when we just had the the uh, the native breeds so that would be an upright hoof past an axis that would be an ideal and this would be sloping and they even put an amount of degrees which is ideal yeah but the problem with that is people were trimming to that and horses with a more upright shouldn't have a more sloping and the other way around it's it it, it just causes problems um okay so this is this is when the line is broken okay this is when the hoof past an axis yeah the line between the hoof and this bit here called the pastern is broken and this is broken back this is broken back yep so to try and correct that to try and correct that then the theory is that you take off the toe and hopefully obviously not as much as that but the theory is that you take off a bit of the toe and it straightens that line up 
you know, it straightens that line up. And the opposite to broken back is obviously broken forward. So these are horses with a far more upright conformation, you know. So hopefully, if you take a little bit of heel off them, then that straightens that line, you know, and it, it returns back to, to ideal. Now the horse that I showed you earlier, yep, had one of these hoof past an axes. Now this is the hoof past an axis viewed from the front, okay, and one is broken in, and one is broken out. Okay, so obviously the line is broken in, which is the same as the horse that I showed you earlier on, but the opposite to that, of course, is, is broken out. Yep. Uh, sometimes horses with a rotational deformity have a broken out hoof past an axis, and the other way is, the, is a broken in hoof past an axis. Okay. So that's the horse there, and you can see he has a broken in hoof past an axis. But, you know, whether you remember this or not, not that important, but the point is to identify and look at the horse's confirmation, and that will tell you what you need to do to it. Okay. So, interesting this, interesting weight experience. Okay. How much of the horse's body weight does one forelimb take, this one here, okay, when the horse is walking? Okay. How much of the horse's body weight does, does one forelimb take um, when, it's, when the horse is walking, okay? So, in walk, half of the horse's body weight, okay, half of its body weight is taken on this limb here, okay? So, really important now when we're talking about imbalance because if, if half of the horse's body weight is taken on one limb when it's walking, yeah, if you've got an imbalance, then that's going to make some of the structures that are designed to take weight equally, that's going to make them bear weight you know, uh, either on the inside or the outside, but unequally. That's not good, okay? In trot, the full body weight, okay, is taken on one limb, okay, one forelimb in trot. In canter, yep, the next um, speed up, it's two and a half times. Two and a half times the horse's body weight is taken on one forelimb. And these are from a chap called Thilo Fau, who's a German guy, um, who works at the Science and Motion Lab at the Royal Veterinary College in, uh, in London. Okay, so they have a lab that's set up with cameras and other devices, force plates, and they, they, their life is devoted to studying and monitoring um, horses in motion. Yep, dynamic motion, you know. And they are sort of statistics from a study that they've done um, in the, at the Science and Motion Lab. So, there's a little bit more, a um, little bit more footage, hopefully. No, okay. It's just slow, -mo slow motion footage, but you can see the amount of shock, okay? You watch the soft tissue structures as the horse lands. Look at all this wobbling around. It's just a massive amount. And you can see how the fetlock descends to the inside normally. Fetlocks descend on the ins to the inside on the hinds. Look at all this. Look at all that. You know, if that's high on the outside there, it's going to make more weight come down on the inside. And then off to lift off. Okay. It's just amazing. It's a great sort of um, tool to be able to see the way that they move and the way that they land, you know, in, uh, in, in slow motion. And look at, how, look at this. Look at that, how close that is. This is on the forward stroke of the stride, you know. Look how close that is. You know, how low to the ground it is, you know. It's just amazing footage. <clears throat> and then it all lifts off. It... So, when we're talking about, um, you know, horses that are exercising, okay, in a half an hour schooling session, in trot, yep, like this horse is in canter, but in trot, on a surface, in a menage, yeah, because most horses in, uh, I would say most horses in the UK, are used for sport, you know, competing, whether it's low level, pony club, or higher level, international stuff, they don't tend to work in a straight line on a hard surface. But what they do tend to do is work in schools, in circles. So again, foot balance is so important 
because in a half an hour schooling session, yeah, the foot will hit the ground approximately 2,500 times. If your balance is so far out, you know, on the right foot and it's in a right circle, that's going to be even worse than that. You know, it's going to make it even worse. So again, you know, it's just an amazing statistic. Um, and that came out of the FEI white paper, you know, on, on equine surfaces. So anterior, posterior, this is a simple equation. We all know this anyway. Okay, we all know this. Yeah, but growth is the opposite of compression. So the more that that grows, the further forward, you know, the center of weight bearing, center of pressure goes on the foot. And the opposite, obviously, the more toe. So horses with long toes and low heels, yep, the toe is the only part of the foot that grows and it pushes everything back. It pushes everything back onto the heel, okay? So the weight, the weight bearing comes further and further back the longer that that toe is. So again, important to sort of, in these type of feet, important to get the toes back and stand the feet up. Interesting this, yep, by lowering the heels by one degree, adds a 4% extra strain on the deep flexor tendon. So the deep flexor tendon is the one that runs down the back here, runs down the back, and it goes underneath, uh, over the navicular bone, and underneath and attaches onto the bottom of this, uh, this bone here, which is the uh, coffin bone, or the P3, okay? But by lowering, lowering the angle of the heel, yeah, by one degree, adds a 4% extra strain on the deep flexor tendon. You know? And again, this is, sci this is scientific. It's been studied, studied and proven as well. Yeah. This horse here, very, very quickly, we're coming towards the end now. This horse here never stands up str straight. You know, he's very short, very long-legged, very short. See, see the back end here, how it's all sort of, um, it's all sort of rotates around and he stands, he's most comfortable with his feet just underneath him. You know, he's shifting his posture. He's shifting his, uh, the way that he stands, the stance, he's shifting it because he's uncomfortable. Yep. It's almost like he's trying to open the, open the vertebrae in the, in the back end here, you know. Um, but he has poor feet. Yep. He has very weak feet. Yep. He normally grows lots of toe. You can see there I've tried to make an attempt in the last shoeing just to pull his toe back a bit. But this heel here that's always compressed, always compressed. So he needs help. <clears throat> He needs a hand, he needs a, a, a help from the farrier, from me. So, I've identified it. If you're going to help him with normal shoeing, then this is what you do. You trim the, fit, you trim the toes back as much as possible. Yep. And from the foot surface, <clears throat> that's what I can take off his, off his toe safely. I don't want to take anything off his heels. Yeah, because we're further sort of lowering everything and we're sort of shifting weight back onto the heel area, yeah. And the back half of his foot is the part that needs the help, you know. Um, so that's the foot trimmed. I've taken toe off. I've cleaned the heels up a little bit, yeah. But I haven't taken, I haven't taken them down. I haven't rasped them down so they're lower than they were. Okay. So <clears throat> as soon as I've trimmed him, stuck a shoe on him straight away. And I, and I know that it's just photographs. I appreciate that. And you've, you've sort of got to trust what I'm, what I'm saying, but it, if you do trust me, it is true. It is true. When he's had the toe off, yep, and he's got a shoe on, and he's got plenty of length out the back here, yep, he's more comfortable. He stands with his hind limbs a little bit further out for him, you know? And they only, if it's uncomfortable for a horse to stand a certain way, then they won't do it, you know? They, t they can't talk to us, obviously, but if it's uncomfortable, then they'll stand the way that it is more comfortable. So again, looking at horses is so important and noticing things is so important, you know. So he looks a lot more comfortable now, okay. And that's the shoe on the foot, you know. It's not an outstanding job. It's just a basic shoe on a foot. And the length, the amount of length, that's normal for me. The people that have been and worked with me um, in the room will know that that's normal for me. It's not done for a picture. Every, my everyday stuff is like that, you know, that's how I shoe horses, okay? But there's lots of length, lots of length out the back, you know, could probably have a little bit more, you know? But when you look at the foot from the solar surface, yeah, then the heel, heels on this foot are around about here, okay, around about there. So you can see he's got around about three quarters of an inch um, 
20 millimeters length, something like that, out the back. Yeah, happy with that. I like that. You know, that to me, simple, but I'm, I think, I think I'm helping that horse. Yeah. And the proof, to me at least, is the way that he stands afterwards. You know, he's just stood up a lot better. Even the angle of that looks a lot better, you know, to me. And I, and I know that the, the, the pictures aren't that clear, but again, you know, I think it works. Yeah. If I know it works. But. So the final aspect is the one that gets forgotten about, and that is the foot shape or the symmetry, you know, which out of the three, I think is the least important. I think medial lateral balance and the anterior posterior balance is, is more important than this. You could hide this with a well-shaped symmetrical shoe, you know, you could hide that if you wanted to. Um, and again, that's another, that's, a, that's an asymmetric foot, you know, when it's trimmed to the long axis, the heel is a lot further back on the outside than it is on the inside. And this is a horse that I used for a, for a study that I did, um, which, was to, which was to measure the distance between the heels. So, so where the white dots are, yeah, I measured the distance between the heels and I shod the horse with heart bar shoes and I made the frog bear weight for 10 months. Yeah, and I, my, the whole point of my study was to see whether the distance between the heels changed, whether it got wider or whether it got narrower, you know? And that was the whole point of my study. What I did find out was that horses in heart bar shoes for a long period of time, that's what it does to the frogs, you know? They don't like it, yeah, it's not good. So if you've got a, heart, a horse that needs heart bars for a long period of time, either put a pad over it and pack material in there or take it out of the heart bars for two shoeings or one or two shoeings, give the frog a lap time to, to, to recover, you know, and recuperate. And then if it needs to go back in and then put it back in and then, you know, but heart bars, long period of time, not necessarily a, a good thing. I don't think, you know. So that's it. That's foot balance. Summary, okay, summary. Farriers don't normally, we don't normally cause imbalances, okay. Horses normally um, have them themselves, they're conformational imbalances, but sometimes we don't recognize them. Really important recognition, and the only way you do that is by looking at horses. Okay? Um, most imbalances are caused by conformation, yep, and hopefully we're going to shoe the horse and not just, not just the foot. Okay, that's it, we get a break now. Fantastic. Does anyone. Thank you. Is, uh, Anyone, anyone have any questions?